oh, you're still watching ways today is a very very <laughs> oh, very traumatic topic for me honestly I, I mean I would I would have taken it lightly that okay mm. it's not that serious because probably because I went through um, female genital <laughs> mutilation well I call it female circumcision but um, hearing all of these things that you're saying it's just making me wonder how you know, people actually live with this kind of pain because some of the people, some of the, I was just reading the research, some of the, some of the points that these people make to justify this act is that the woman has a, a, a better threshold for pain when it comes to childbearing and all of that. And most of the people that do this or perform this act on the young girls are way, way older women. You know, they don't, I mean, it's not a young person. And these things keep going from generation to generation. generation. So yeah. if we were to curb this or to completely eradicate it, you know, who are we talking to? Are we talking to the young people or we're talking to the older women? Okay, um, I, um, I think I was, I, someone asked me this question um, um, about two days ago when I was granting an interview, and, um, I, and I told them categorically that FGM is not a one-sided approach, right? It's not something you have to say, okay, let's focus on uh, Mr. A, later on we'll come back to Mr. B, or let's talk to Mr. Z, Mr. B can always, can always sort them out. It's something that is holistic. The, the intensity with which you are talking to Mr. A must be the same intensity, probably a different strategy with which you are engaging this. Because for instance, if you are talking to the older women, are you aware that there are some women who will say, okay, this is fine, I won't do it. But because of their husband, the husband is the person that is even ensuring that this is done. So you have to, as you're talking to the woman, there has to be a way to talk to the man. As you're talking to the man, you need to talk to probably another person, the, 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 the man's mother, mm -hmm. right? So everybody is important. You need to talk to the, the traditional people, people that are, we call them custodians of custom, right? You need to talk to everybody. So nobody is more important so, than the other person. Okay, so my question of, sorry, Uti, the question of um, criminalizing the act. The practice, yeah. Yes. Is there any law against it right now? So a lot of people are beginning to come up with law. Uh, one, I know that Ekiti, they, there's something called the VAP Act, Violence Against Persons, persons? Uh, persons something, something like that. Uh, the VAP Act is there, which people are using, which it captures yeah. FGM, you know, in, in the law. Um, I know about Eboin. Some people have passed their own Eboin, Ekiti. And, 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 and I hear that the child's law Child yeah. protection law yeah, also captures actually covers rights child law. rights law yeah. rather actually covers things this around um, harmful traditional harmful, yes, practices and all it that. Didn't state it specifically, it didn't state yeah. specifically, but just generalized. Yes, we talk about harmful practices. traditional practice, but um, the VAP law talks about FGM. Some people are also coming up with it, but I I know that I think that it's not just about coming up with laws. You know, if laws are not enforced, not enforced, it's useless, mm -hmm. right? Uh, people can come up to put up anything for political reasons and then take all the praises and all that. But if we can't catch one person and we can say this person has been jailed for doing this, yeah. nothing will happen. But again, how can you set up a law if the people who have taken this as part of them are not telling you we are not keeping it? which is why we must have more communities that are coming out to publicly declare. Because if a community publicly declares on that ground, mm. you can enter into the community and look for people that are defaulting. Mm -hmm. yeah. You understand? How? So now across communities as we've been working, we have trained people as community champions in the villages. Mm -hmm. So for the, for the communities where we are working, um, across the country and the, place, the states that I know that I have my colleagues that are working, um, we have communities where people have been trained as uh, champions, uh, FGM champions. So those people are also start, uh, being like watch uh, whistle gatekeepers, whistleblowers, trying to identify. Now, again, they are not fighting because you can't fight people away from it. Uh -huh. It's also about dialoguing and yeah. train, get, trying to get people to, learn, to understand. Like so we have those people. We have trained traditional rulers who will bring and sit them down and explain to them from point A to point B and they start seeing reasons. Mm -hmm. And they also go back and start talking about it. We've had religious uh, leaders, people that are uh, clergies, 
to also start talking about this because they are also major influencers. We've had people, we've had to even talk to circumcisers themselves. To abandon their practice, However, their means of life. Exactly. No, some of them are doing it because it's a, means, a way, not because, now, we now begin to find out that actually there, there was actually no basis for doing this because some of them, after interview, they tell you that this is how they make money. Mm. So in which case, you are actually not doing this because you want to save the girl, but you're doing this because Guess you want what? to make money. Guess what? That's because what I, 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 I had a conversation with my mom, you know, when circumcision was happening yeah. in the 80s, it was not about money because it was really like peanuts, okay. literally. In fact, what she was saying was that you give them snail, mm. you give them oil, yeah. you give them like the cutting materials and, you know, and very, very tiny. So how would somebody make money off of that? So I tell you the truth right now, a lot of people are, it's like, it's now a, a business making stuff for some people right mm. now. You know, because people have to travel. Some people used to travel all the way from the city to go, to to go the home to do go it. And get it done. I can't, okay. you understand what I'm saying? So it's something that is so treasured. You know, so, okay, so we question. found now that it's a, a good, a viable source of income. So yes. again, capitalism at its Exactly. Place. I was just even going to speak to um, the International Day of Zero Tolerance. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that, what it stands for? Okay, the International Day of Zero Tolerance is actually uh, a day, it's celebrated every 6th of February annually. It's a day set aside by the UN, you know, to commemorate the the entire drive and push to eliminate the practice of zero um, FGM. Uh, it was actually declared by our f late former uh, first lady, the wife of uh, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, Mrs. Stella, Stella Obasanjo, Obasanjo uh, wow. in 2003 during a conference of um, uh, the, the Inter International African Committee of, um, on the stoppage of harmful traditional practices, where she declared the entire um, International Day of Zero Tolerance. And after the declaration, it was now adopted by the United Nations, oh, yeah, you know, amazing. to now be, you know, to now be an annual annual celebration. So ever since 2003, every year February 6th, um, 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 the, the entire world celebrates. So what that. do you do on that day? So on that day, we have a lot of, of course, it's a global commemoration. So a lot of people have a lot of conversation around, you know, Human drive and strategies okay, to. Okay to stop the practice, all the stakeholders come out, we celebrate people that we call survivors, that we have people, you know, again, I mean, I, I must also have to also celebrate you for even on the media coming it. out to say you actually underwent this practice because a lot of people, now that they understand that, ah, they are not feeling like, sure ah, they understand, they are not proud to not talk about it. And so we're beginning to have people that are coming out to share their stories because it is their stories and the experiences that can now either enforce what we're saying or, or, or not. Um, they, when they say that it is, is a, a, um, FGM corpse promiscuity, we have a lot of people who, who we are caught who are so extremely promiscuous. Yeah. So how can you now on that ground say this is, we have a community, a, a state where we have worked, where there is high rate of promiscuity. However, the girls there, have the, about 95 percent of them were, we're all caught. Mm. We've had the women who were not caught, but are extremely resourceful, producing results in the society, and, and they are not promiscuous. All right. So how can you on the ground to say this is this? So what about the men? Hmm. My question now. Yeah. My question is, um, why is it that it's okay to circumcise a female child? Uh, sorry, a male child, a male child mm -hmm. but it's not okay to cut a female child. Okay, um, basically, um, from my own experience, I will tell you that first of all, the, the male external genitalia is the male genitalia is on the external, right? Which actually puts it in a more likely position to for infection and all that, which is why they have to remove the foreskin, right? For the female, the female has no uh, the female genitalia is actually internal. Mm -hmm. Right? So in which case, it's already kind of preserved, protected. The male child is that you have to remove the foreskin. But I think, it, well, I wouldn't really, because I was saying to you guys, in Europe, for instance, yeah. you know, a lot of them, guys, I mean, they're men, they are not circumcised, you know. I, because even when uh, my sister had her son and she wanted to do it in hospital, they would ask you, is, it, is there any medical challenge or something? Mm -hmm. But in her mind, she's a Christian, you know, like our, uh, our, our practice, is, our faith says, you know, at least when the child is, you know, it's, it's 
days old. The, yeah, eight days old, you go and have the, the male child. Yeah, the yeah. male child, you know, have the child circumcised. What's there? You know, so she had to actually even Google and look for a Jewish um, rabbi. Yeah, yeah. rabbi that we traveled, I think, about two hours to mm. get the young man circumcised and all of that. So even even there, some people don't feel the need that they have to be circumcised. So again, now, like I said, this is actually based on people's belief, yes. right? Yes. Our own, we have a strong, as Christians, we have strong backup to say from the scripture that we believe. So where I'm going with the yeah. conversation is because... I mean, listening to my mom, it was a very strong conviction mm -hmm. that, you know, this promiscuity thing you're talking about is a very strong uh, conviction that they also were, um, it was handed down to them. Mm -hmm. That if you do not circumcise your female child, she will be all over the place, you know, jumping from mm -hmm. one man to the other. Yeah. It was very, very strong. Legit. The way we are strong about, con we're convinced about having a male child circumcised mm -hmm. is the way they feel that. So how will we be able to break that conviction? Because this is just, a, for me, it's a culture thing. I asked my mom, I said, if you were given a chance today, would you circumcise? She said, never, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. because now she knows better. Mm -hmm. A lot of these people are misinformed. Mm -hmm. They don't really know. Yeah. So, but what they have been taught is that, okay, I have to do this, you know, for you to, for the child to be, so the child will not be too, um, um, like her sex drive will not be too much and yeah. all of that. Mm -hmm. So how do we break that? Okay. Um, I mean, we're just talking enough. No, no, no. It's not just about talking. Um, it, it's also, it's also not something you have to force, right? Mm. It's not something you have to. You can't. You can't. You don't force. It change. has to be a subtle approach. You don't force change. And I can tell you that a lot of work is being done right now. I just listed to you yeah. a lot of people, strategic people that are uh, that are uh, that have been involved. In this conversation, we are beginning to have policymakers who are also coming up to also lend their voices. However, um, I was asked the question: uh, What do I think about um, the UN? Have they've set a target to stop the practice by 2030? Do I think it's feasible? It's feasible, yeah. And I asked, I told them that the truth is that a goal, if you set a goal, if just one goal, and give yourself 50 years to achieve it. It will be dependent on the intensity of your action. If you set a goal to achieve one task and you fold your hands for 100 years, nothing gets done. Mm -hmm. You set a goal to achieve 20 tasks and you want to achieve it, you set a, a timeline of 10 years and you increase the capacity of your action. You can even achieve it in less time, less than the okay, time Okay, so sorry, let me, let me quickly take All a right. message from um, our WhatsApp platform. Somebody says, good evening, fam. Ooh, this topic is overwhelmingly disturbing in many shades. I really want to understand the process involved in women um, entirely changing their genitalia. What is the process like? Is it also a form of mutilation? Can we have... Because um, we have heard cases of women who ent um, entirely change their genitalia by removing the whole female reproductive part and replacing it with a male reproductive part. What happens in this case? That's case cases of transgender. transgender. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, that's, um, that's I, anonymous. Uh, what 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 uh, you just asked right now? You talk about removing the entire and then changing. That's now yeah, a I'm choice issue. Yeah. yeah. You understand? That's now a different conversation altogether. It's now it, it's not something we can. Um, it's a choice thing that somebody just wakes up and says, ah, I don't want I don't to be want a myself. woman again. No. I want to be a man. Mm. It's a different conversation here. But then... And the person is doing it as an adult. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that one is not a problem. This other one we're talking about is that in most cases, it's been done on a child who has no right to choose. Oh. My question now is, um, over the years, is there any reduction? Do you think there's, it's reduced and the rate is reducing? Um, is there a surge? Uh, uh, again, uh, I think people are becoming more aware, okay. right? People are becoming more aware that this is a challenge. People are becoming more aware that even though um, it's, it's a culture that the forefathers, the foremothers, the ancestors and passed them. across to them, they're beginning to see the, the thin lines, the connections to a lot of things because there are more very sensitive things, more important things to discuss in today's world. 
than a lot of archaic <coughs> belief system that people you know think about because coming to think of it um i'll come back to your, your question in terms of if the i numbers, think if i think if that there is an awareness yeah. uh, but then the challenge is that if we understand the 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 effect it has on ladies right because if you are not directly affected you are indirectly affected you know it can be your friend it can be your wife it can be your uh, colleague somewhere and if somebody like that in the workplace or if you is a colleague suffering from trauma or shock or each time the person remembers it the person jacks up and productivity reduces mm -hmm. it affects you that is working and you may not understand what the person is passing through mm -hmm. so back to your question i think that a lot of work have been done more people are getting more aware. In fact, in one, one of the work that I do is that I'm working with UNICEF and cutting in the uh, on the UNICEF and cutting girls campaign to also use social media to you know come up Raise with this conversation. Yeah. Yes, so people are becoming more aware, and we are also hoping that they are not just aware; they are beginning to also take decisions. Okay, so there's somebody out there right now mm -hmm. saying to my to themselves, "I want to get involved." You know, how can I also be part of this campaign to, to raise the awareness and stop it? So what and what, I mean, what, what, can they do? what can they do? What is available for them? Where can they engage and all of that? So, I mean, um, the issue of FGM is online. A person can join the... So every, every um, Thursday, for instance, we have a platform where we get to discuss... Uh, for the past uh, it's over three, four years now, every Thursday back to back, and then every Tuesday we'll get to do, I think once in a month, but I know of a th Thursdays, where we'll get to do conversation on Twitter around female genital mutilation with the hashtag end cutting girls. It happens every So all the young people who want to add their voice get to be part of that conversation where we'll talk about different you know, areas where this is happening. And from there, people can start getting aware and also start educating people around them to say this is not good and this is good. But again, we need a lot of young people now, just like you said sometime, you know, when we went on break, that, um, uh, how did you put it again? You talked about young people. Yeah, changing because, the young people. Because yes, the because, generation will pass exactly, down. because our, our ancestors who brought this don't understand where the world is going right now, uh -huh. you know? So, and the young people, they will soon get married, they will soon give birth to children, they will soon do all those things. And as we are coming up, we need to start changing the narrative from bottom yes. top approach and not, there's nothing I can do with the parents. I can't go to my great grandmother, my, or my grandmother who is still alive. <laughs> She's like dry fish. You understand? And sit her down. She will not understand yeah. what I'm, if I say mutilation. Mm, she doesn't even understand the, the How yeah. do you even want yeah. to start that yeah. conversation yeah. with her? How do you want to start telling her that even something that, when she has not even started thinking about getting married mm. that they have been doing that you now are not coming to tell because you went to one school and then open book so it has Thank to be young people coming yeah. up with the conversation because if we are not directly affected we're indirectly affected Thank can i go you. for another question no you cannot of course sadly we we've run out of time but i want to say a big thank you and um i think for us we might end up adopting this um as an, one of our projects as well here on, on the show because we are women, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm happy to share my own story, yeah. but I, I really don't have a traumatic story yeah. like the woman, but I mean, we're women here, we'll continue to push for it and hopefully we'll be able to get more people to join us on this course because it's yeah. actually a fantastic, um, it's a fantastic thing to end, yeah, was, judging by this explanation. <laughs> I was just going to, to ask if there, so I know there's a hashtag we, if we want we, to continue the conversation. Yeah, it's just end right? cutting. Yeah, we have end, end cutting, cutting girls, girls. Yeah. we have end FGM, we have Absolutely. youth end FGM. All right, thank you so much, already, yeah. Mr. Raymond Opani. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank I've you. really been educated this evening. Thank All you. right, so catch us live every weekend from Fridays to Sundays at 8 p.m. as we bring thought-provoking, engaging and informative conversations to your screen. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. We are human beings. We make traditions. So we should have the right to choose those traditions. That's from Malala. So enjoy the rest of your evening. Ladies, you've had a very good, you know, it's, a very, it's a very show. calm show today. Absolutely. Thank you. For very me. traumatic, but we thank God that, you know, we'll get more voices heard. Thank you, okay. thank you so much, Raymond. Thank you. Thank you. All right, have a lovely evening. Thank you.